So for years now, I've been working in a 24 frames per second timeline. I shoot most of my footage at 24 frames per second. Uh, and recently I've been seeing a lot of debate on 24 versus 60, when you should shoot what, should you just film all your videos, all your vlogs, everything at 60 frames per second or 24? I don't know, there's basically a whole lot of debate about it. So I figure why not kind of sit down, talk about it. Uh, and yeah, that's this video, let's do it. So real quick, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Johnny. I do video and photo work for a living. I've been in this industry for almost 10 years now. I guess it has been 10 years. We are in 2020. Uh, but yeah, I've been in this industry for 10 years and I make a lot of videos, a lot of videos. So hopefully you guys are able to take some away from this video today, but let's just hop right into it. So when should you shoot 24 frames per second versus 60 frames per second? If you are looking for the most cinematic footage, the most cinematic look, you definitely wanna be working at a 24 frames per second timeline or 23976 to be exact, but I'm gonna just reference it as 24 frames per second as most people do. And you wanna keep in mind the 180 degree rule. So if you don't know what that is, basically whatever the frame rate is that you're shooting you want to double that to equal your shutter speed. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be one over 48. Or on most of the SLRs, you might have to round that number up to one over 50. That's gonna give you the most natural looking motion blur. So if you see my hand right now, there's a little bit of blur to it and it just is very natural to the eye. So that's what movies are shot in. It's what your high end Netflix shows are shot in. Um, and there's really no reason why you shouldn't do it for your own YouTube content or maybe your freelance work for different companies and everything like that. So that's gonna be the most cinematic look. And you wanna make sure you are always working in a 24 frames per second timeline. If you want to shoot 60 frames per second, you can still drop that footage into 24 frames per second timeline, but it's no longer gonna be true 24 frames per second footage. Um, and what I mean by that is literally 60 frames per second is actually 60 pictures in a second versus 24 pictures in a second. So it's gonna look a little different to the eye. Um, sometimes if you guys have ever seen like, I don't know, iPhone footage or just, different phone footage or things like that where it just looks a little too detailed or a little unnatural, that's because they're shooting at a higher frame rate and their shutter speed is gonna be a lot higher. Cause if you wanna keep in mind that 180 degree rule and you're shooting at 60 frames per second, your shutter speed is gonna be like way up there, like one over 120 or one over 125 on DSLRs and everything. So you're gonna see a lot more detail in the movement. Now there's certain times you might be wanting to do that. Maybe you're shooting, I don't know, in action sports or someone running, or maybe it's a music video and you wanna see every detail of the movement and everything like that. Um, there definitely are exceptions to all these things. There are definitely moments when you might want that higher frame rate or see more detail in the movement. It's gonna give you a little bit different of a look. So the benefit of working in a 24 frames per second timeline is any frame rate higher than 24, so 30, 60, 120, so on and so forth, you have the ability to slow it down in post. So I actually have a video talking about this a little bit more in depth. Um, I'll link it up above and in the description below. But basically, let's say you shoot 60 frames per second, if you throw it in a 24 frames per second timeline and slow that footage down, you can actually slow it down to 40% and you're gonna get some nice looking smooth slow motion. I know a creator, Jesse Driftwood, he he has an awesome channel. Uh, he said on a podcast that he shoots everything at 60 because um, that way he has the option to slow down footage anytime he wants. Now he does some pretty unique edits, some pretty crazy different things for Instagram stories and things like that. So to me, it makes sense for him to be able to slow down that footage anytime he wants. But just keep in mind, if you're trying to do it from a technical standpoint, uh, dropping a 60 frames per second footage in a 24 timeline, even though it might look okay, it's still gonna be off since you are having that higher frame rate, that higher shutter speed. Uh, it's just gonna be a totally different look than 24 frames per second. So my personal standard for myself is the only time I'm gonna shoot higher frame rate than 24 is if I know for a fact I'm gonna slow that footage down. Otherwise, I want the most cinematic looking footage that I can, and that's why 24 is a no-brainer for me. So 24 frames per second, it's gonna give you that cinematic look. It's gonna make your footage look a little bit more high-end, and if you're looking from the industry standard, 
uh, a technical standard. Uh, 24 is definitely the way to go, but definitely figure out ways that you can shoot these higher frame rates and kind of make it work with your different workflow. So guys, quick and easy video today. Hopefully you are able to take some away from it. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Have you always been shooting at 24? Maybe shooting 60? Uh, let me know. I'd be interested to see what you guys have to say. But if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Looks pretty good. Hopefully uh, the setup is good. I got to mess around with some different angles. We got to test out some different angles in the office, but I really was just kind of excited to sit down and kind of hop on this. So hopefully you guys liked it. Smash that thumbs up.